Hey folks, West Boss here. I wanted to do a quick video on nested object destructuring and nested object destructuring and renaming. Now I have an ES6.io course. You can check it out. And we have an entire section on just destructuring module five, and it goes all into destructuring arrays. Cause I, I, I think destructuring is the, one of the best parts of uh, ES6 in general, and I use it absolutely every single day. And in destructuring itself, there's all kinds of things you can do with it. You can destructure objects and arrays. You can get into nesting, nesting, renaming the values that are inside of your objects in your arrays. You can provide fallbacks if the values aren't there uh, to some sane defaults. And, um, I really, really like it. I use it every single day. However, um, I do see a lot of confusion around specifically the nested destructuring syntax because um, it gets a little bit scary with a lot of curly brackets and, and whatnot. So what I want to do is show you specifically not the entire part of destructuring. I've got a whole course on that. But if you want to know um, how we can use nested object destructuring to pull out variables that are often deeply nested, um, this is how we're going to do it. So what do we got here? What, am, what are we working with? Well, I've got a function here called make item. Inside of that, we are going to return an object. Inside of that object, it's going to have data and status. And then data itself has an item property, which itself has a name and a size property inside of it, right? Like this is fairly typical data that you get back from an API where it's so deeply nested and you find yourself just diving for the actual information that you want. So let's go right here and let's just say const response is equal to make item. And we'll just console log the response there. Good. And we get an object that has our data and our status. Now, the whole idea behind destructuring is that if you need to make multiple variables from an object or an array, you don't need to have many lines. You can pull out multiple variables from that data in one single go. So if I wanted to have a data variable and a status variable, I don't need to do something like this, const status equals response dot status. And I'd have to duplicate it over to data. And that would give us uh, the data and the status properties. There we go. So we have our data and we have our status. Okay. But what if I had like nine properties on this object that I wanted variables? I do this all the time in React where I want a template with small little variables instead of saying like this.props.data.item.name or something like that. So what we can do with destructuring is get rid of those two lines and we can immediately take the object that gets returned from make item and put it into its own variables. So we'll just say data and status. And that will give us two separate variables, one called data, one called status. And we're able to go whatever we want. We get alert the status and that will obviously alert live, right? Okay, that's great. But what if I actually wanted to get the item inside of that? This is where nested destructuring starts to get in, right? I could uh, console log data .item, and that's going to give me the actual item. However, I want a variable called item that is inside of this data.item. Well, you can destructure infinitely as many levels deep as you want. So we can just say data is now going to be destructured into an item variable. And now this is going to cause an error. Reference error data is not defined. Why? Because we no longer have a variable called data. We now have a variable called item. And data is just used to sort of get to it, so to sort of jump a couple levels deep. So we destructure data into its own sort of temporary variable, I guess. It's it's not going to be a proper variable. And then and then we get to our item. So I can just console log item directly here. And now we get the actual item, and we still have that status variable that we structured as well. Good. Well, <laughs> let's let's go nuts. Let's go a little bit uh, deeper. What if I wanted uh, a name and a size variable just outside of that item. I didn't necessarily care about the item variable. So we could destructure item directly into name and size. Okay, now we get item is not defined because it's no longer a variable, but we'd have console log name and size variables. There we go. We get shoes is the name and the size is still an object. So are you thinking what I'm thinking? Let's go even deeper and destructure the size property into uh, what what is it? The properties U.S. and E.U. U.S. and E.U. And now we don't have a size property. We have a U.S. and an E.U. property, which tells us shoes ten and forty four. 
Good. So that is what nested destructuring is. One other thing that I, I wanted to show you is the ability to also rename them. So let me show you an example of some code that I'm, I'm working on right here. Uh, I have this function called create item. And it, what it does is it, it creates an item. Now, what happened is that my the response that came back from this create item API, it gave me a response dot data dot create item. That's where the actual item is. And I needed to get the item ID in order to, to change the page. Okay. Makes sense to me. But the problem was, was that I was destructuring out into just a top level variable called create item, because that's the, the property that comes back on the object. And then I was trying to push the router to create item dot ID. And I ran into a problem because what was happening is that I was destructuring the a variable called create item and then I also had a function in the same scope called create item and they were overwriting each other so I said oh okay well I can't I can't do that so what I did is I renamed the create item property into a variable called item and then I could go ahead there was no naming conflict between the two of those so that's exactly a, a use case of when you'd want to do that um, and you can just use the colon property. So maybe if I wanted to say the US was normal and the EU sizing was weird. Actually, that's the other way around. The US is weird because why do you have 10 and a half? Uh, and the EU is normal. Now I no longer have variables called US and EU. I have variables called weird and normal. And that should give us the exact same values, 10 and 44. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, I want to show you real quick uh, how to how to do it with arrays as well. So I'm just going to comment this out. I'm going to just say const response is equal to make array of items and console log the response. Good. Now I just I just care about the data, so we could destructure the data. And now response is no longer there, but we just have data. Good. And in this case, you notice how I'm not destructuring status. I don't care about it. So it's, it's moving on to the next one. Now, inside of that, I have items. So I maybe I want to destructure the items. I want to get to that. Beautiful. And now maybe I only care about the first item. Now, how do you destructure arrays? Um, you simply use the square bracket notation instead of the curly brackets. So square bracket item, or maybe let's call it uh, item one. And then I say item one that gives us item one and you could also uh destructure item two into its own variable as well item one item two so that is nested destructuring and renaming hopefully you learned a thing or two if this stuff is a little bit over your head check out my es6.io course um and that will bring you up to speed with all that destructuring has to offer and you can work your way up to some of this more complex nested destructuring Hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.